as students. Now, calculus part is now very very important concept. Integrations part is now. Mostly parts are needed to discuss part by part. In previous class, we know the differentiations and application of derivative, continuity and differentiality. You will look at this this part. The calculus part is three parts. One is the differential calculus, another one is the integral calculus, and also you said that is the third part is differential equations. We know that in differential calculus is the foundation is limits and continuity. That we will discuss more today. Ah, mainly the relations between differentiations and continuities. Okay, now discuss more today. Again. Application of derivative, you get to do now study part three. You want to now integral calculus and not touch part three. This one is the integral calculus part, first part. What is meaning of integrations means the integration is the method of adding or summing up the part find find to the whole. Under it, no integrations is the Method of adding, we are going to add part by part. Now, parts, parts are going to add. The whole values are going to be added. That is integration. That is called integration. Is the method of adding or summing the parts to find the whole of that. Again, the concept of integration has developed to solve the following types of problems. This concept is now. Now solving the two types of problem in the first one. The first one to find the problem functions when its derivatives are given. Already you know that derivative of the functions y is equal to f of x is a real value function. Ananda, we are finding d by upon d x. It means we are find the rate of change of y with respect to x. Ananda, okay. Or the moment of the curve, curve na kutha ga, adi yahuri ki moanta ye na dunna na mum derivative of y and that to it means we are finding yahuri points the slope of the tangent. Here in this case we are finding functions, functions kutha ga na mum moment sa na kere na mum kudo. Aage suppose the moment sa na kutha ga we are finding. Problems, original functions are now continued with the integration and the use part. Again, one more to find the area bounded by the graph of functions. When the graph of functions are now put, a area bounded by the graph of functions. Boundary is there and the put there. That is, all the other area one the area are continued with the we are using the integrations. There are two types. One is to find the problems functions when its derivatives are given. The second one is find the area of the bounded by the graph of functions under certain conditions. Constraint. It means what are the conditions the boundary and the border? Now, in other conditions, we call area. In other conditions, we call now integration. Some of the concept that we use now. We are using concept of integration. We are using integration. So, to find the Original functions when derivatives are given is called the indefinite integral. Here, in what way? Suppose the derivative is given, we are find the original functions, the problem of functions when the derivatives are given. Other derivatives are not put there. We are find the original functions, and this method is called the indefinite integrals. It's clear. The next one, the definite integral. There are two types of integral. One is the indefinite integrals. Another one is the definite integral. What is definite integral? Definite integral is a way of adding slice to find the whole. Under it, no small small and parts are the same. Whole and the whole can be defined. It is the way of adding slice to find the whole. Or indefinite integrals can be used to find the area of the whole. If one the whole and the whole. We are finding the area, the volume, the central point, the whole, and many useful things. We are using definite integrals. 
definitely different are entirely different but the calculations that he is one and the other he is same using the same concept here you know that the integration is divided into two parts the first part is called the indefinite integrals and the second part is the definite integrals you clearly understand the indefinite integrals easily to calculate the definite integrals that is indefinite and I'm sorry definite and indefinite integrals one by one we study the first one is the definite indefinite integrals integration is the inverse process of differentiations what is the meaning of indefinite integral means here you know that integrations you say that indefinite integrals or is said to be integrations integrations is marked by the original functions when the derivatives are given it is called the integrations integration is the reverse process of differentiations and the differentiations go through that other reverse process and indefinite integral and the integration is the process of finding the anti derivative of the functions it means what is meaning of indefinite integral indefinite integral means the process of by integrations means the process of finding the original functions other than anti derivative of the functions derivative means the slope of the derivative anti derivative means the given functions is anti derivative of the functions of the derivative the process of differentiations and integrations are inverse of each other and the you know, integrations are there the original function of the derivative here given the slope and differentiation is there the original function in an our derivative of the derivative therefore one is the inverse of other derivative this one is the basic concept of indefinite integrals in indefinite integrals we know that the differentiation is the process of finding the derivative of the functions and integration is the process of finding the anti derivative of the functions what is meaning of integration a differentiation differentiation is find the derivative of the given functions here find the rate of change of y with respect to x the process of finding the derivative of the functions that what the is given here find the slope of the tangent it means the moments of the points either the non continuity Ate integration is the process of finding the anti derivatives. Now we saw from the book the original function and now we are going to do that one is called the integrations. It means anti derivative. Differentiations means finding the derivative of the functions. Integrations means finding the anti derivative of the functions of that one. For examples, the derivative of sine x with respect to x. Do you know that the derivative of sine x with respect to x is cos x. Here, cos x is called the derivative of sine x. Cos x is another derivative, derivative of sine x. So, sine x is called the antiderivative of cos x. The simple definition: the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x. Here, cos x is called derivative of sine x, and sine x is called the antiderivative of cos x. Integration of cos x is equal to sine x, and the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x. Or one more example, so we know that the derivative of x bar is equal to 2x. Therefore, you can say that 2x is called the derivative of x bar. Therefore, integration of 2x is equal to x bar. You know that integration of 2x is equal to x bar. The integrations in mathematically the technique to find the functions g of x, the derivative of g of x is equal to the given function set of x suppose here you can say that integration is the mathematical technique to find the functions g of x g of x and the continuity the derivative of g of x is f of x is given the this is indicated by the integral sign yes it is the sum of signs what is meaning of s is the integral sign integral sign means is the yes notation says notation means the sum of these lies to get the whole that one is that whole is s mark is the integral notation as in integration of f of x and the usually called the indefinite integral of the given function the symbol of dx is represent infinitesimal dependent 
along x because integration of f of x into dx is the summation of the product of f of x and d of x the summation of product of f of x and d of x this one is the meaning the process of finding the indirectly integral is called the integration or integration of f of x it is clear here you know that that is simply you can say that the derivative of capital f of x with respect to small f of x the integral of small f of x with respect to x is equal to capital f of x here writing c is very important here this c is called the arbitrary constant because the derivative of x square is equal to 2x the derivative of x square plus 1 is equal to 2x the derivative of x square plus 2 is equal to 2x the derivative of x square minus 3 is equal to 2x suppose in c is arbitrary constant you can take it any real numbers then you say that the integration of f of x is equal to either f of integration of 2x is equal to either x square or x square plus 1 or x square plus 2 or x square plus 3 or x square minus 3 or like this that will in every integral you define integral constant or arbitrary constant adding is very very important the simply you can say that the derivative of f of x is equal to small f of x then integration of small f of x is equal to capital f of x and adding the arbitrary constant here c is belongs to the, the set of real number for different values of c you get the different functions here different thing only for only for or only by a constant here the graph of this function is given us an infinite family of curve x square you know that one curve x square plus 2 is the similar type of curve only changing its center x square plus 2 is again the similar type of curve only changes the moments of the each curve are same that we can say that the graph of this function gives an infinite family of curve the same moments curve the same x coordinate the tangents are parallel to the same slopes that we can know that the small figure here you know that the curve is like this x square x square is equal to y plus 1 x square is equal to y minus 1 x square is equal to y minus 2 x square is equal to y minus 3 similarly x square is equal to y plus 1 y minus y plus 2 y plus 3 These are the same family of curve. In a particular point, at the point x is equal to a, you draw a line parallel to y axis. Each point, you draw the tangent. The tangents are the tangents are parallel. Therefore, the moments of each curves are same. When the moments of the curve are not look like that, but the positions are different. It depends on the constant. Therefore, you can say that the figure shows. The some members of the family of the parabola of the curve y is equal to x square plus c for different values of c. C is belongs to the set of real number. Hence, you can write the integration of f of x with respect to x is equal to capital f of x plus c. That one is the representative family of the curve. In a particular value of c. It means the curve is passing through the particular point. Suppose one comma one and three comma one. They are possible. Then a constant term. Then you find out what it is. You get the infinite term. Suppose x square is equal to the integration of two x is equal to x square plus c and the other way. Suppose this curve is passing through the origin of the point. Then c equal to zero. Therefore y is equal to x square is the origin of the point. In a certain conditions, you find the infinite term. Some properties of indefinite integrals. Here, you know, there are some properties of indefinite integrals. The first, the first one, the process of differentiation and integration are immutable. You know that f compositions g is equal to identity and g compositions f is equal to identity. Then g is for the inverse of f, or f is for the inverse of g. Here also, you can say that integral sign and differential signs, the composition functions, always you get the identity functions. It means the differentiation of integration of f of x with respect to x equal to f of x, or integration of derivative of f of x with respect to x equal to f of x. Is clear? Derivative of integral of f of x means 
f of f compositions g of x is x, g compositions f of x is equal to x. It means integral of derivative of f of x with respect to x is equal to the same function. Therefore, integrations and differentiations are invertible. Integration is the inverse of differentiation. Differentiation is the inverse of integrations. Therefore, differentiations and integrations are invertible functions. The second one, the two indefinite integrals with the same derivative lead to the same family of law. And so, you said that they are equivalent. It means integration of f of x with respect to x and integration of g of x with respect to x, it leads to the same family. The derivative of indefinite integral with the same derivative. If the derivative is one day, then you say that these two curves is represent the same family of curve. Already I explained the derivative of x square is 2x, derivative of x square plus 1 is 2x. It means integration of x square is equal to x. 2x. Integration of x. Uh, integration of 2x is equal to x square and integration of 2x is equal to x square plus 1 on the derivative. This x square and x square plus 1 is always represented by the same family of curve. And the moment with respect to x, you know, both the curves are same. Therefore, these two curves are said to be equivalent. The proof is not necessary. Similarly, remember the third property of the results. The derivative integral of the sum integration of f of x plus g of x with respect to x equal to sum of their integrals. Integration of f of x plus integration of g of x with respect to x. Similar integrals, integration of f of x minus g of x with respect to x is equal to integration of f of x minus integration of g of x. Clear? Yeah? And similarly, for any real numbers k, there is any constant. The integration of constant into function is always equal to constant on the side, integrate the given functions with respect to x. And the fifth one is the combined these two, the integral of k1 into f1 x plus k2 into f2 x plus k3 into f3 x up to k into f n x. It means the integral of the sum equal to sum of that integral. Integration of constant into function, you can get it. the constant is outside. Even an x part multiply k1 constant outside for the integration of f of x with respect to x for the and plus in, integral of sum equal to sum of that integrals plus k2 in integration of f2 with respect to x plus last one is a and b integration of f of n with respect to x. It means constant into functions you can take in constant integral of sum or difference is equal to integrations of integral of the sum and difference and integration of the sum of the two function equal to sum of the integrations and integration of the difference of the function equal to difference of the integrations. These five basic concepts results in indefinite integrals. The similarly here remembers the very important spoken results or 50 results in basic concept of indefinite integrals. The first one is using by definitions here you know that the derivative of x raised to n with respect to x is n into x raised to n minus 1. The similarly the derivative of x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 with respect to x. Here 1 by n plus 1 is constant. It is clear. And derivative of x raised to n plus 1 means n plus 1 into x raised to n. n plus 1, n plus 1 is cancelled. Therefore, you get x to the power n. By definition, say that the derivative of f of x equal to g of x on the integration of g of x is f of x. Therefore, you can say that integration of x raised to n with respect to x is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus integral constant. In every indefinite integral, definitely you can say that adding integral constant because indefinite integral means family of curves. Not a unique curve. In a given certain conditions, you get the unique curve. Therefore, indefinite integral means family of curve. The differentiation means the slope of the tangent, the moments of the curve. The similarly second line. It is the one is the particular case. The derivative of x with respect to x is always one. 
It is clear, you know that using the same result, density of x is two and with respect to x is one. Therefore, integration of one with respect to x is x plus c. The third one is integration of sin x. The derivative of sin x is cos x. Therefore, integration of cos x is equal to sin x. The fourth one is the derivative of minus cos x is equal to sin x. Cos x means minus sin x. Minus cos x is equal to sin x. Therefore, integration of sin x with respect to x is equal to minus cos x. The fifth one is the derivative of tan x equal to second square x. Therefore, integration of second square is equal to tan x. It is clear. And the sixth one is the derivative of cot x is minus cos x square x. Therefore, derivative of minus cos x square x is equal to minus cot x equal to cos x square x. Therefore, integration of cos x square x with respect to x is equal to minus cot x. And seventh one, the derivative of second x is equal to second x into tan x. Therefore, integration of second x into tan x is equal to second x. The eighth one is the derivative of cosec x is equal to minus cosec x into cot x. But similarly, the derivative of minus cosec x equal to minus plus cosec x into cot x. Therefore, integration of cosec x into cot x is equal to minus cosec and x. And you know that derivative of sine inverse 1 divided by root of 1 minus x square. Therefore, integral of root of 1 by root of 1 minus x square is equal to sine inverse x. And derivative of cos inverse x is equal to minus 1 by root of 1 minus x square. Therefore, derivative of minus cos or cos inverse x is equal to 1 divided by root of 1 minus x square. Therefore, integral of 1 divided by root of 1 minus x square is equal to minus cos inverse x. And the derivative of tan inverse x equal to 1 by 1 plus x square, therefore integration of tan inverse x with respect to x is uh, integration of 1 divided by 1 plus x square with respect to x is tan inverse x. The integral of cot inverse similarly, you know that x1 is minus 1 divided by 1 plus x square, therefore integration of 1 divided by 1 plus x square is equal to minus cot inverse x is also in previous result. Here you know that the sine inverse x means the uh, integration of 1 by root of 1 minus x square means sine inverse x and also you write minus cos inverse x and derivative of tan inverse x equal to 1 divided by 1 plus x square integration of 1 divided by 1 plus x square is equal to tan inverse x and similarly derivative of cot inverse is 1 divided by 1 plus x square minus sine no? therefore integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x square is equal to minus cot inverse x plus integral constant similarly second inverse derivative of second inverse is equal to 1 divided by x into root of x square minus 1 derivative of cosec inverse is equal to minus 1 divided by root of 1 by x into root of x square minus 1 therefore integration of 1 divided by x into root of x square minus 1 is equal to x square minus 1 is equal to we can say that either second inverse x plus c or minus cosec inverse x plus c the similarly the derivative of e to the power x with respect to x is e raised to x and integration of e raised to x with respect to x is equal to e raised to x plus integral constant and derivative of log x with respect to x is equal to 1 by x, either x here, log x, the domain is always set of positive real number. Therefore, taking the modulus sign, it's clear. Therefore, derivative of log x is 1 divided by x. The similar integration of 1 by x with respect to x is equal to log of modulus x. Modulus of x because either x is positive or negative and taking positive only because the domain of log function is always the set of positive real numbers. And one more, the derivative of a raised to x with respect to x is a raised to x into log a to the base a. Therefore, derivative of a raised to x divided by log a to the base e is equal to a raised to x. Therefore, integration of a raised to x is equal to a to the power x divided by log a to the base e plus integral constant. And also one, the, one more the particular results, integration of 1 divided by root of x with respect to x is, remember, 2 times root x plus integral constant. This one is also the particular case. All these 15 results are very, very important. In next class, we start the problems, the simple problems. Thank you.